Hello everyone! Today we will be taking a look at the now over a year old constantly lit ecosphere. There, naked is better. But before we take a look at its current status, let's see what happened in the past year. A little over a year ago I made this closed ecosystem. It contained a lot of boogie worms, usually referred to as tube effects, we had cyclops and ostracots, and the eight-eyed blood hedgehog, Erportella octoculata, a predatory leech that does not suck blood. Two weeks later, it looked like this. It turned out that there actually were bladder snails in the ecosystem, which was a pleasant surprise. The eight-eyed blood hedgehog and the cyclops were still present, and as it turned out, a little flatworm was living in the jar. Although, looking at the tunnel system it created, it was probably more than one. And as we all know, flatworms seldom appear alone. There were also still a few sea shrimp or ostracods. The water, at this time, was very clear and the glass and soil was covered in algae, mostly thread algae. After four months, the water turned this greenish, brownish, orangish, beige purplish, infrareddish color because of single-celled algae and most of the other algae were gone. There were no more thread algae forests on the glass. There were still a lot of boogie worms. The snails were still there and the ostracot population had completely exploded. At this point there was no more sign of the cyclops, flatworms and eight-eyed blood hedgehogs. After the four-month update I left you <coughs> In the dark. <laughs> so, this is the closed ecosystem after a little over a year. There's a lot of ostracods. When the ecosphere was four months old, we saw a large increase in the amount of ostracods. That trend continued, there are even more ostracods now. A lot of them are actually training for the Olympics currently. These are feasting on some snail eggs. After four months, it looked like all the cyclops had disappeared. Well, as you can clearly see, they didn't. There's actually quite a few of these copepods living in this jar, and they're actively reproducing. Many are bearing eggs. Flatworms also never actually disappeared. I did only see this individual flatworm, but remember, flatworms seldom appear alone. I actually don't think that this flatworm is the same species of flatworm you might have seen in my other ecospheres, for the simple fact that it looks quite a lot different. The shape of the body, and mainly of the head, is different, it moves differently, and it has no visible eyes. Until it moves underground, where its eyes light up. Pretty cool. Also, I think that this is just another tube effects, but if it's not, it isn't, and it might be something else. Did I just say, just another tube effects? Yeah, I did, because we still have boogie worms, and a lot of them too. Yeah, baby, woohoo! There's also still bladder snails, which I don't think comes as that big of a surprise, partly because I did just tell you about the ostracods eating snail eggs. This one is causing a major traffic jam for those ostracods, maybe as a retaliation, but I don't think so because they don't have the brain to conjure up such a plan. Notice those little balls on the ostracods? They could be parasites. Or not. On this patch of algae you can see that it actually grows better where the LEDs aren't, unlike the thread algae I showed you a year ago, which grew better right where the LEDs were. Speaking of thread algae, although not as abundant in the ecosphere as it was after two weeks, there's still quite some of it here. More interesting are these dark and long baguette shaped objects in between the algae, or maybe they are part of the algae, I can't really tell. 
I have no clue what they are. These are some new patches of algae growing on the glass. There's also lots and lots of little white balls all throughout the jar. I've never seen these before and I can't say with any certainty what they are, but I think they are ostracod eggs. I was actually surprised to see this little fly on the outside of the jar. Haha, ha, trick you. This ecosphere is a little different than all of my other ecospheres. Since the day it was built, it has not seen any darkness. During the day, it receives light from the sun, just like all the other ecospheres. At night, it is illuminated by the LEDs surrounding it. And there are some differences in the development between this ecosystem and the others. For instance, after a year, this ecosphere has retained most of its biodiversity. Visible biodiversity, I must add. The only animal that isn't present now that was in the beginning is the eight-eyed blood hedgehog. If we take a look at the spring ecosphere and the natural ecosphere, for example, they lost quite a lot of species over the course of a year. In this ecosphere, we only lost one. It is important to keep in mind that this ecosphere had fewer initial species than the other ones, probably due to random chance, so it's not really a fair comparison. But if we take a look at, let's say, the boogie worms in this ecosphere, there are more individuals now than a year ago. In the natural and spring ecosphere, they were extinct after a year. Also very interesting is that the absolute amount of animals in this ecosystem is quite high. That in and of itself is not very spectacular. We've seen a high number of animals in other ecosystems. The difference though is that in other ecospheres the amount of animals sort of goes in waves with large dips in the amount of animals as well. In this ecosystem however the absolute amount of animals rapidly went up right in the beginning and has stayed constantly high. I really want to believe that both these differences can be attributed to the constant light. But this is hardly a scientific setup so we can't draw any conclusions. But it's fun to think about. I know I say this every time an ecosphere reaches a considerable age and I won't stop saying it. It is completely, totally, absolutely, utterly awesome that such a small airtight jar can contain life in the form of a minuscule ecosystem while only receiving energy from the outside world. I really find it very special. Look, it's a bunch of ostracods swimming up this thin layer of water drawn between the strings of algae due to capillary action. What a glorious sight! Let's also talk a little bit about the effects of constant light on this ecosystem. First, let's look at the animals. Being an animal yourself, you might have wondered how constant light affects the animals inside this jar. More specifically, don't they need to sleep? That is a very good question that I'm afraid I don't have a good answer to. Very little is known about the sleep of invertebrates in general, which all the animals in this jar are, let alone about the sleep of specific species. The only scientific papers I could find regarding sleep in crustaceans were papers trying to prove that crayfish sleep. So I can't say much about the ostracods and copepods, and if their sleep, if they even sleep, is affected by the light. There are literally no papers at all about the sleep in tube effects, even though quite some papers are written about tube effects. I can only tell you that, based on my own observations, I would say that it is likely that if these animals do in fact sleep, there is no correlation between sleep and light in these animals, or at least not a major correlation, because these animals have lived, reproduced and thrived in this ecosystem for many generations and are still present in large numbers. An animal that is not present anymore is the eight-eyed blood hedgehog. And that just might have something to do with the fact that there's no darkness in this ecosphere. You see, Herpopdella octoculata is a predator. It likes to eat small animals, like the ostracods and cyclops, but also animals like mosquito larvae, swallowing them whole. And it hunts at night. If the eight-eyed blood hedgehog determines that it's night by the absence of light, with one of its eight eyes, 
that might be the reason it went extinct in this ecosystem, because the night never came. There's also algae in this closed ecosystem. We saw the thread algae and the algae on the glass that didn't grow so well right where the LEDs were. The color in the water is probably also due to single-celled algae floating in the water. This is quite weird because algae, just like land plants, require a period of darkness. The complete technical details of why they need darkness are quite complicated, but in a nutshell they need darkness to reoxidize the electron transporters in their photosynthetic mechanism. If they don't have darkness, they can't do that, and as a result, they can't photosynthesize anymore and they will die. So, what's going on? Well, if we look at this piece of algae, it looks like the algae did actually die right where the lights were positioned. So, it follows the theory. In this older footage, you can see that the thread algae grew considerably more right where the lights were positioned. So the lights are useful for photosynthesis, meaning the lights not being photosynthetically capable couldn't explain the algae still being alive either. I must add though, that this footage is from when the ecosphere was two weeks old, so that might not have been long enough to kill the algae. If we look at the jar nowadays, we can see that there isn't a lot of algae present on the glass and that most algae exists in the form of unicellular floating algae in the water. So, what I think might be happening, and again, this is just a theory, is that the light of the LEDs is much less bright than daylight. Well, I know that part is true. And because it is much less bright, some of the algae are able to actually cast a shadow on the other algae, allowing them to reoxidize their electron transporters and not die. And because the water with the algae cells in it is constantly moving due to the movement of all the animals, almost all algae cells are able to cast shadows on almost all other algae cells, allowing a large amount of algae cells to thrive and survive within the jar. Again, just a theory. Because there is a lot of light available, there is a lot of algae. Because there is a lot of algae, there is a lot of food and oxygen available for the ostracods, cyclops and snails. Therefore, there is a lot of ostracods, cyclops and snail poop, which the boogie worms and bacteria can feast on. All animals and some of the bacteria produce CO2, which the algae can use for photosynthesis. And the bacteria convert the poop and dead animals and dead algae into inorganic nutrients for the algae to grow. And that completes the cycle. So that is how this ecosystem has been an ecosystem for a year now. It's amazing just how much life is present in this jar, and I mean that literally. There really is a crazy amount of ostracods and tube effects, but uh, I will stop rambling now. That was the update. Something completely different. An alarming amount of my subscribers apparently receive no notifications of my videos and don't see my videos in their subscription feed. I realize that most of you seeing this video probably aren't having these issues, but if you do, try turning on notifications if you haven't already, and if you have, try switching notifications to all notifications. That might help. Uh, I think that's about it. Thank you very much for watching and good hi.